Hello, Ocoee region. Oh, I almost didn't get that out. <laughs> Welcome to the Hidden Gems of Ocoee region. And I'm back with you today to talk about this great um, inner healing and vision getting retreat that is coming up in uh, September. And it's coming up during Rosh Hashanah. Yes are the Feast of the Trumpets, <laughs> and uh, Jamie Robar is here because she is leading this uh, retreat, and Jamie, I just want to welcome you, and I am so excited about this retreat, because I'm into the seven feasts, and I'm into flowing in those, so this is perfect. So tell us about Inner Healing and Vision Getting Retreat. Well, thank you first for having me here again. But yeah, I'm, we're so excited about this retreat because number one, I believe it's a, the most spiritually fertile time of year where Holy Spirit moves so powerfully to set people up for the next year because of course it's the start of the new year on the Hebraic calendar, which, right. we, which we call the Jewish new year, but actually it's God's new year. It's Come God's on. calendar. <laughs> so, you know, and during this time, you can really sense the Holy Spirit brooding over you more, I believe, than yes. any other time. And he downloads people's uh, instructions and their paths for the next year. So it's a really great time to closet yourself away with the Lord. So what we have done is we have uh, obtained a retreat center that's local here in Cleveland. You can find more details about that online at from his right. Presence.com. And we have people coming in from all over the country. And we're going to do two things during these days. It's going to start on Sunday around 3 p.m. and end at noon on Wednesday. And we're going to first teach and facilitate and minister in the area of inner healing. Mm -hmm. And so that's going to involve uh, healing from father wounds, healing from mother wounds, which are a very mm -hmm. big and untalked about thing in the kingdom. <laughs> um, healing from the spirit of poverty, breaking soul ties, um, breaking off generational curses, Masonic curses, renouncing those things, cleaning up our spiritual bloodline. And so all of those things um, are going to be not only I'm going to teach on them, but we're also going to equip people to teach or to minister the same thing. Right. So they will come in and be healed themselves, and then they will be able to go out and use this as they're making disciples from day to day. You know, even if it's just encouraging a friend, they'll know what to say and how to pray yes. because what we do is very prayer based. You know, we yes. don't, it's not about having to, uh, having to have some kind of a power play with some evil force. It's simply we hand things to the Lord, yes. we receive His truth in the place, we ask Holy Spirit to fill us, we receive, uh, you know, all of His ministry, and people are healed that way. Yes. So we're very excited. And the second component is that we are going to be just getting with the Lord and talking about vision and receiving that vision from him. And Lord willing, and the weather cooperates, we're going to baptize people into their future, and which is baptizing forward. I'm not sure if you're familiar yes. with that, but it's just going to be an awesome time. And I would encourage anybody who has not ever been through a formal healing process to do this, uh, to come and closet yourself away with the Lord for these few days because, you know, you can be healed over time and that's great. There's nothing wrong with that. But why go around the mountain 11 yes. more years or 40 yes. more years or one more year when you can take four days and just drop it all at the feet of Jesus and let him heal you? I love this, and it's coming at the appropriate time. And one of the reasons I wanted to get you on this early, August 2nd, is because we've entered into the month of Elu. I think I said it right. And it is the time of preparation. Yes. Okay? And I was reading Rabbi Abraham. I got my own personal rabbi, y'all. Abraham, uh, he just did a uh, article on uh, preparing for the preparation. Okay. That's awesome. <laughs> and and what he's saying is we have to recognize that you 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 are feeling every you can feel what's going on in the atmosphere. Yes. But we have to be prepared. We have to start preparing to receive what God is going to do in Rosh Hashanah. Yes. And so We've got, this is a time of forgiveness. It's a time of forgiving others. Yes. It's a time for forgiving yourself. It's a time for preparing your spirit to receive, as you were talking about. So that's why I really wanted to have you on instead of later, this early, so people can start prepping themselves for the new year. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. And and what I and this is what I love to always say, September is such a huge movement month for God. It is. Okay? Because you got Yom Kippur yep. uh, and Sukkot that uh, is going on in this month right after Rosh Hashanah. Yes, it's one holiday after the other, absolutely. And and, and I will say feast yes. versus holiday. Yes, that's right. Because we are talking about the seven feasts. And so, and, and when you really study the feasts out, Leviticus chapter 23, I think, um, if you really study the, the feast out, he lists seven of them. And so, but these in the spring, these, uh, I mean, in the fall, these fall feasts are yet to come. They have not been fulfilled yet. Mm, yeah, deep. Come on. Yeah. I can't go there because we'll get stuck. <laughs> but, you know, the spring feasts have already been fulfilled. And I, one of the uh, spring feasts is Passover. Yes. But I love what you're doing. This is so great. And this is what I was reading. This is where multiplication can happen. Yes. Because for every person that comes and becomes whole, then they can go out because you're going to send them out. That's right. Equipped. They're not to keep equipped That's and they're right. not to keep this to themselves. That's right. They are to go out and touch people in their family, in their community in their workplace. Absolutely. I love it. I really do. And I really love the fact of first tackling the inner healing because you can't really hear God and hear what the strategies are unless you're whole. That's true. Absolutely. You can't find any level of intimacy no. with the Lord, not with Father God, not with Jesus, and not with Holy Spirit Come on. if you have certain kinds of hurts and wounds. And if I can go here. Yes, please. Um, I'm... We, hear, we hear a lot about fatherlessness and about father wounds. And um, the Lord has given us some really unique revelation about how to see those healed. But the thing we don't hear about, as I mentioned a moment ago, is mother wounds. And they're not the same. And here's a little a teaser Come that on. I think you're going to love. You know, father wounds will keep you from being intimate with the Lord and from believing him because we, we tend to adapt our perspective of life to what we experience with our earthly dads. So if we have a perspective of Father God, we can't really, if that perspective is not in line with God's word, if we don't see him as good and loving and kind and generous and gracious, then we're not going to be able to believe that he is. Even though we see it in the word, we, we can't internalize it. Mother wounds are something that is even deeper, I believe, because mother wounds, get this, mother wounds will keep you from receiving. If you have a father wound that's healed, then you can start believing the Lord. But you can't actually receive until you also have your mother wounds healed. And think about it this way. I have a baby. He's about seven months old. Yes. I am a breastfeeding mom. So he depends on me for his sustenance. If he's mad at me, then he cannot receive from me. Okay? It is the same way because Holy Spirit is the member of the Trinity who does many of the things mothers. that we think mothers do, right? Yes. The Holy Spirit is the comforter. Yes. Holy Spirit is the one who leads and guides us into all truth and so on. Well, we can't receive that comfort if we have a mother wound because our perception of the person administering that comfort is skewed. Mm -hmm. And so even with things like provision, and I will tell you, when I healed from mother wounds and father wounds, it was two totally different experiences and the method was similar in that we pray and we release things to the Lord, but the results were so different because when I healed from father wounds, my perspective got changed and my heart got healed. But when I healed from mother wounds, I began to receive. I began to receive financially. I began to receive comfort. I began to receive encouragement that I had always known were available to me, but had never actually experienced the level that the word promises. Come on. And that's why so many things, we're not walking in the fullness of salvation. Right. We're not walking in the fullness of his power and authority. That's right. Because of the father's womb and the mother's womb. Yeah, absolutely. And you know that that fullness of salvation, there is a full gospel. Yes. And that full gospel is based on the fact that the blood of Jesus bought us back into our original purpose with God. And so that means healing, that means salvation, that means access to his presence. It means complete provision. It means uh, influence, yes, you know? Yes. It, everything that God 
intended for us originally was purchased for us by the blood of Jesus. And if we have not appropriated one part of that, we are still living beneath our privilege. Oh, yes. And, you know, Isaiah chapter 53 in the Amplified Classic Version says that Jesus will see the fruit of the travail of his soul and be satisfied. You know, Jesus will one day look at us and he will remember the pain and the agony, the blood and the tears that he poured out. And he will look at us and he will say it was worth it. And I want him to be able to look at me and what I've done with my life and be satisfied with the pain he endured. And oh, don't you? Oh, you know? God, yes. Absolutely. Come on. We all run away from long suffering. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I had thought that in. We do. We want all the characteristic or attributes of fruit of the Spirit. Uh, you know, we want the love. We want, but long suffering, we're all running from it. Okay? But, oh, my God, we have to walk that as well. But when we have the fullness of the gospel, the fullness of the salvation. Yes. And I love this because I just learned free, a definition of freedom is salvation without accusation. Wow. That's great. Come on. That's great. Because a lot of us are still walking around with piles of guilt. We're mm. stuck in our past. We stuck in those wounds. Yeah. Okay? And they are preventing us from walking in his original intent. And you know sure that's are. what I'm sure about. Are. It's yes. about helping people to release that. Yes. And and so that we are so we receive the fullness of our inheritance, you yes, know? Yes, absolutely. And it's not because it's not there. It's because we can't receive it. That's right. That's right. So I really love this. So let's say this again and tell people how they can sign up. Okay. So it is September 9 through 12, and it's here in Cleveland, Tennessee at Johnston Woods Retreat Center. Oh, great. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. And so we're starting around 3 o'clock, September 9, which is Sunday, also my birthday. Uh, birthday. <laughs> thank you. And then we're leaving at noon on Wednesday. And to, so to, to sign up, people just can go to my website, fromhispresence.com. Mm -hmm. And there is a very prominent button and near the top of the page, just under the logo, that says Inner Healing Retreat. And they can sign up there. The cost includes... Um, their lodging. It includes their meals. It includes the conference. It includes the con includes the conference notes. It also includes a one-on-one -on -one, um, prophetic appointment with my prophetic team, which I have uh, people that are well recognized in the prophetic community that are coming in from different I places in the that. country to help minister. So who's a couple of those people? Uh, one of my uh, people is uh, my friend Karen Hardin. Yes. And she writes for the Elijah List and for Charisma, a number of other places. And uh, we also have some others that Okay. Um, that are coming in that I want to kind of keep under wraps. That's all right. I just want to be pull great. one little name yeah, out there yeah. because Karen Harden's special. She is. She's <laughs> fabulous. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's going to be uh, those four days of just powerful encounter. And, you know, it's not going to be hard. Some people think, oh, healing, that will be painful. It's not going to be painful. Mm -hmm. It's going to be fun. It's going to be freeing. It is. Absolutely. Okay. Fun and freeing. Yes. Okay. All right. We have about a minute and some seconds to go. I, I feel it. I just feel the Holy Ghost. A Koei region um, community really needs a word. And I felt this from yesterday when I text you. So I want you to look in that camera right there. And whatever God is speaking in your heart, speak it into that community. Okay. Well, when I was praying about what to say, I saw preachers and ministers rising up that were young and that were inexperienced in ministry, at least in their opinion. And I saw these people that were beginning to speak words of fire, and I saw sparks coming out of their mouths. And what the Lord told me to tell you was that there are some preachers and some ministers that are called to ministry, even if you don't consider yourself a minister yet. And you've been telling the Lord that you can't do it because of your past. You've been telling the Lord that you're not qualified, that you don't have the right degree, that you have too much in your background. But you know what? Jesus said that he, he bled for for your iniquity that's bleeding on the inside. He has healed you. He Right now, he wants you to know that whatever the fire is that you are currently in, it's not a past fire. The fire that you're currently in has already purged you and he's cleansed your lips. So he looks in your heart and he says that he has weighed you in the balances and found nothing wanting, nothing wanting. And so he wants you to rise up. He wants you to speak those words of fire because sparks and power are going to come out of your lips and you do not need
need to think that you're inadequate because he has weighed you and tested you. And in uh, Psalm 18, it says that he has found nothing wanting and he is recompensing you according to the cleanness of your hands. That's how Father sees you. Oh, my God. You know, there's nothing else to say on that <laughs> other Good than Jesus. thank you. Thank, Thank you, you Jamie, for being here. Thank you for ushering in the Holy Spirit in here. I feel the anointing. And I want to thank you, Hidden Gems of the Okoe region. Thank you for joining me again. And as I always say, God bless and be a blessing. <laughs>